And what are you working on here? Uh, making a flat sheet. Just these guys have got some um, flat pieces of stock they can use, filler panels, whatever. It'll come in handy down the road, sort of as we get spooled up here today, just maximize their time. Okay, so you're waxing up the, uh, the table that we're going to vacuum form that down to, make the sheet on, right? Correct. And then over here to the right, we have the, uh, the layup table where you've got uh, all your carbon fiber cut and the bleeder material and the bagging material all ready to go. Yeah, everything's there ready. It's easier to cut it out, make it ready while it's dry. And I'll just transfer it over here, put some resin, make a beautiful pot. Excellent. We're now prepping the layup table where uh, Reg has put down the yellow sticky tape that will stick to the bags. You see the blue tape is actually covering it. That's painter's tape. You put that over the top of the, the yellow tape that you use for bagging so that when you smear the epoxy on, which George and Reg are doing right now, you don't get it on the yellow tape. If you get it on the yellow tape, your bag won't stick later. So they're putting a coat down on the table and uh, then we'll show you the next step as we go along. Okay, we've got the surface wetted out and Reg has his uh, carbon fiber material lined up on the, uh, the layup table or the prep table and he's going to carefully roll out the first layer on the wetted out surface and uh, then we'll wet this one out and then roll the next one out on top of it, Reg? Yep, that's correct. Okay. Just keep all night as we go. Excellent. You can see George and Reg applying the epoxy to the first layer. They're using a, a kind of a, a, a tamping motion. You want to make sure that you don't have any puddles of resin. See how you can see the texture of the uh, material through the resin? That's about the way you want it. It'll be not so nice. Okay, the first layer is about wetted out. Uh, we have to make sure, Reg said that this layer is uh, not dry anywhere, otherwise the surface won't come out. And Reg is going back and, and picking out uh, some of the hairs that fall out of the brush. Uh, this is more common with a fresh brush. You want to make sure to get them out of there because it will make a hard spot and then uh, which causes a bump in your uh, final product. And it's not so strong because it ain't bonded. Continuing the process, we're on the third layer. We're going to go to a total of seven. I need you to cut me a strip, a little bit that's going to cover up anything here. So yeah, there's right there on the table. Okay, so you've got the seven layers of carbon down now? Yeah. And this is the uh, the breather? This is the peel fly. The peel fly, okay. Yeah. And you just carefully roll it out? I'm just getting rid of any air bubbles and stuff, basically. I'm not laminating it on, I'm just smoothing it out, making it look nice. Okay. And then for, if there's a little exposed edge, like we see right here, you take some of your scrap material, which George is getting ready to do. I'll try not to spin here too quick and make everyone sick. We've got some extra scrap peel ply here from when we cut the large piece and you cut strips of it a couple inches wide and you cover up those edges because they won't add wrinkles to your material. Well, it'll be easier pulling it up at the end. Otherwise, the bleeder, if it gets on there, it'll, it'll be very difficult to pull it up. Okay. So we're just making life easy for us. The next layer is the release material. Okay. Is this the... Nice. Yeah, this... This is the plastic that's got the tiny, tiny holes. You probably can't see them in it, which allows the excess epoxy to be pulled through into our into the bleeder, the bleeder material, which is a slightly thicker. Looks kind of like felt, but a thick felt. Oh, I meant the release. That was the the release they had. Okay, and this is oh, the bleeder releases. Yeah, because it's for different heats and um, elongations and stuff like that. And then the bleeder material, two layers, gets laid down right on top. Yeah, I'm using the, two layers because I want to make sure we got as much resin out as we can. It's a nice, light, light, strong part. And since this is the first time I use this resin, we'll just be double shot. Okay. All right. Now we take off the... Take the tape off? Yeah, but leave the tape underneath. So you, you see how I got it overlaid? Take the top layer off first. There you go. You should watch what I'm doing with the camera. It's just pointing at the floor. <laughs> I 
That leaves a nice clean the uh, the tack strip that holds down the uh, the plastic so we can pull a vacuum. Okay, and then we pull the cover off. This is bad. Oops. That little fiber there will let it we'll uh, let air suck it. air back through it. So we've got to lose it back inside. Okay. So yeah, we don't want nothing over the, the tape. And right here you can see there's multiple layers of bleeder material getting thicker and thicker. The last one's just a, a scrap piece that's folded over about three times and we put our puck down. And there's a piece of honeycomb in there so that it doesn't lock down. Uh, okay. Otherwise it'll lock down and vacuum lock itself and you won't get any suction over here. Okay, so yeah, little... You can use uh, cardboard, but honeycomb is better. Honeycomb and is much better. Since we had rolls that we could take a little waste piece off of. Okay, let's stop there. Beautiful. Let's start off here. Yep, go down. Always, always make your piece too big so it's not too critical, Reg just said, before I hit play. And uh, we, took, we took the cover off half of the yellow tape. Uh, about there you can see where, where the... Uh, okay, down. Where the uh, material is still covering it so that the plastic doesn't stick until we get it straightened up. Reg is working on straightening it, trying to get all the wrinkles out. Then he reaches underneath the plastic, pulls the rest of the cover off the yellow mastic. Rubs it down tight so we get a good seal. And you can see the, the head of the puck here is sealed under the plastic for right now. He's going to tell us what we do with that when we get to it, but I'm guessing we just kind of shove the other end through, poking a hole in the plastic. Is that about right? It's pretty close. Okay. We may cut a little notch or something first. We're going to use first. number nine single edge razor blade to put a little sweat in it. Ah, okay. How about that? Okay. He's making sure that there's no fiber stuck to the, the yellow mastic, otherwise it'll suck air through, you won't get a good vacuum. Yeah, no, it's far enough back, it's okay. okay. I mean, if you get one or two, it's not the end of the world, but the more you get, the more you lose your vacuum. Grab us a Cuts a small hole for an opening. Fixes our vacuum line. Just a little bit. Alright, now we're pulling vacuum. Slowly turn on the vacuum to start with and then we can work up to a higher vacuum as we check to make sure it's okay. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure there's no crinkles too much. I mean, on flat later on on the sheet you get crinkles, but it's a control crinkle where you want. Okay. And then you can do your puck up tight when it's got some pressure on it. So don't do it up tight to start with, just... Because it'll pull the plastic together. Once it gets some pressure down on it, you can get it nice and tight. Okay. I'd say now that's Merry Christmas pretty much. Excellent. Now we just wait 8, 10, 12 hours until it kicks. It kicks. All right. Now you're squeegeeing out the plastic. Yeah, just a whole lot, just to you know, make sure there's no air bubble anywhere if I missed her or... Using the back side of the squeegee that you cleaned off ahead of time with a razor blade to make sure there weren't any sharp edges? Yep. Okay. That's what you were showing me about uh, an hour ago when you were cleaning it. <laughs> yeah. You can use like a sticker, detail applicator or whatever, just whatever, it don't have a sharp edge. Because uh, you put a slice in it, it's really easy. If you put a slice in it, then you lose your vacuum. Yep. And then chase it with a piece of tape as quick as you can. We would just put our hand over it and have someone stand there. That's not the way to do it. No, really. Man. Well, she got something you don't like. Well, it worked for Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Oh yeah, you can see it pulling nicely through. It's yeah. nice and even. That's good. I like that. Okay, yeah, and you can if see... If it's too wet, you'll, it'll just go like bloop, green, you know what I'm saying? Or if it's not enough, it'll be really white, but we're just it's just coming out nice. Nice and even oh, through the... Oh, that's just so sweet, yeah. This is probably the greatest thing you've seen today. Okay, here's the final product of the carbon fiber sheet that we made. We haven't trimmed the edges yet. This is seven layers of carbon. Uh, you can see this is the shiny side is the side that was down on the table. It's what you're looking at now. It's about a four foot by four foot sheet. I think it's actually 48 inches by 52 inches. This is what we're going to use for any flat stock that we need. Um, it's real light. You can see actually the on this side you can see the uh, texture of, of the carbon. Um, that's that's how you can tell that you got just enough resin in it, not too much. And we'll trim off these edges because these are actually like razor sharp and you're going to cut yourself on them. So we'll trim them back a little bit before we start taking pieces off of it. And this will be our sheet stock for when we need a, a flat area or for when we make the, the edges around the windows where we're going to put the windows on.